This is going to be a quick overview on how to get started playing High Frontier using the Vassal module. This video has several parts. The first part is just a basic setup and get running. After that, we'll dive further into gameplay and how to maintain a game. First thing you want to do is go to vassalengine.org, download the current Vassal module, and install it on your computer. Then you'll go to dropbox.com, download and install the Dropbox software, create a Dropbox account, and receive the email from your game moderator or coordinator to join their folder. It's going to be a shared folder that will have access to the files you'll need to play the game. The folder you'll see here has some specific ones we'll cover right now. From the Dropbox menu, you'll be able to open your Dropbox folder. This is a shared folder for all our computers. Anytime you save a file to it, it'll upload. Every time I add a file to it or fix something, it'll share it to your computer so you have ready access. Inside you'll have archived game logs, the rules, which are basically a series of PDF files with the current rules for High Frontier Living Rules. We have some teaching resources, and I'm just going to give you a quick view of my favorite is this basic summary. I use this when I'm teaching the game. It helps with some basic information and on the second page of it it has greater details on how movement and actions work in High Frontier. If you'd like a copy of it, it's also in the Dropbox. For everyone else who's not invited to the Dropbox, I also have also posted it to BoardGameGeek and to the Yahoo group of Phil Eklund for High Frontier. So let's jump into Vassal next. When you open up Vassal, you'll have a window similar to this, just won't have any of these modules in it. We need to add the module first. We're going to tell it, go to File, Open Module, Navigate to your Play by Form area. We have a zip file with it compressed, and also in the HFV40 version 40.3.6 file, there is a VMOD file. I'm just going to have you choose the VMOD file and open it. This will take a few moments. Now the first time you open a module it will ask you for to create a username and a password. Create that and you will be good to go. What we're going to do next is load a file. So we're going to go to file load game navigate again to your play by form Dropbox. Inside there we're going to have two files, a save file and a log file. The log file is a track of the previous player's turn. You always just open the most recent log file. You don't have to open them all. On your turn, we'll start by opening a previous log file. First time you join it, it will ask you what faction you're joining. I'm going to stay an observer for now, but go ahead and join the faction that you pick. The window will open with several buttons across the top. A area here to track my turn, and then down here across the bottom, is the entire game board so you can see what's going on. I'm just going to start advancing using this button right here to advance through the turn. Hey look, it's the beginning of a turn and I wrote some notes and then I'm going to shuffle the patent deck. So as we go across a couple buttons there is the hide server controls if you're playing online that would be useful. If I want to go undo the last move to see back up or rewind I can go that through that process here to go back and forth. If I'm changing factions, if you join an observer and now you want to become NASA, that's fine. We'll just join another side under retire player. The next three buttons, roll 2d6, roll 1d6, and event rolls, will help determine random events and successes th throughout the game. The next button is the turn order button. Next are patent decks, and I made a note in the log file that I'm about to shuffle these. You shuffle them by doing a right click and shuffle. A lot of things in the game, if I can't do it with a single click, you'll have to do a right click. So I'm just going to continue following that process because I'm not actually going to shuffle them. I'm going to let the log file do what the previous turn, previous player was doing. Next we're going to move the rocket pieces. So I'm going to close the patent deck. And in the patent deck you notice we have a refineries, robonauts, thrusters reactors, generators, radiators, and a bunch of stuff for colonization, you can just ignore that. If you hold over a card, it does show me the top card. I cannot see the back of it or what's next. That only happens when you put stuff up for auction. 
So let's go to the player screen. And on the player screen, we have a place for your hand, for your water tanks, the basic player mat, for what's on your rocket, and some other stuff for colonization, even a place up here that it has the operation list. We also have a list of all the cards in their different decks and what their benefits and disadvantages are. So we're just going to go to NASA for a moment. And if we go to the player screen and to the player pieces screen, there are all the pieces that you'll need. Right here we have two pieces for NASA. So we're just going to forward to the next piece. And that's what that did is in the previous player, or when I set up this log file, it moved the piece from here to the player board. Let's see it again on the ESA board. And you'll notice right here we have our piece. We're just going to continue moving all the pieces out. And then I can close this. Notice we also have all your refineries, all your claims. We have uh, tiles for busted sites and some pieces for colonization again. If you hold over a stack of anything, it'll expand it to let you see inside temporarily. So we're going to fast forward. You notice a claim just got put onto Luna. We're also going to have to bust all the sites on Mars because that's the setup for the Legacy or Expansion game. I've completed the process of viewing that last log, so now I'm going to start a new log as if it was going to be my turn. Um, on your turn, we typically have your turn one will be here, player whatever number you are, and your player name. And you can just save your log file in that order. For example, if you if it was turn one, I could be turn one, one. If I was Shimizu, I would put that in here. And then I just tell it to save the log file. I have to start by giving a place to go. But in this case, we're going to leave it as... Player zero, intro, number two. Great. So, on our pretend log that it is Shimizu's turn, Shimizu says, hey, I've got cash, but no cards. I need some cards. So Shimizu is going to come out here and say, oh, you know what I really want? I want a great Robonaut. So I'm going to put this Robonaut up for auction, and that's going to come with this radiator over here, but I don't get to see what's behind it. I just, all, all I get to see is the basic Robonaut. So at this point, Shimizu says, I'm bidding on that. I'm going to start the bidding at zero. I don't need to say anything in the game. I can say put up Robonaut as a research operation. There's the movement operation I did with no rocket, no movement, not a big deal. So I'm going to advance it to our operation step. Operation and Shimizu bid zero. At this point, I'm going to end my log file because now we just have to start the auction. While Vassal is really great for maintaining our gameplay and pieces and boards and cash, it's not so good at managing auctions. So we're going to go over to Safari, jump back to this area we have set up, and post a note bid zero. And I'm just going to select all that and bold it so it's easy to find. Post to the website, post to the forum. So at this point, Shimizu has an auction. We'll wait 24 hours, go through all the bids. It's 24 hours from the last bid to complete it. And no one else bid on it, or actually other people bid on it, and we raise the price to two. So I've reopened High Frontier. I go to File, Load the Game. Again, I don't need to load all the logs, just the most recent log file. Number two, tell that to open. Before you take your turn, always advance through all the other steps. Yes, I am going to create a new log file because I have to do part three of Shimizu's turn. And at this point, Shimizu wins auction for two WT. So now I'm going to pull up my player screen pull it off to the side so I can see Shimizu. I'm going to pull up my turn screen and I can pull this over to my board along with the top card. After I've won the auction I also need to go to my player screen, right click to deduct 
the cache that I had and that will put us back to the end of my turn. At that point I would go up to the file menu, choose end log file and it would save my current turn and be ready for the next person I could post onto the Board Game Geek website. I've saved my turn. I want to review a couple things on this page and on the module. If you hold over a card, it shows you what's in it. If you have a stack of cards and hold over them, it will show you both cards. If I want to see individual cards in it, I double click and then I can even flip cards face down and now it's on its promoted side. If these cards were on another player's board, you can see them just the same. If you do a trade, you can just drag your card to the other player's board. If you're done with the card, you're selling it. We can just right click, return to bottom of deck, and get the cash for it as your operation. Again, we'll return to bottom of deck for that card too. When you add fuel, you go up by tanks. When you spend steps of fuel, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see that, you would go down by individual uh, pips based on the consumption of your thruster. Put your primary thruster over here on the rocket stack, but other than that, there's no place you have to put your cards. I'm going to click move here to hide all the movement. If you're done with your turn, that's a great way to clear off the board, so that way you can see what you're doing. I Other notes about the gameplay, don't forget the patent cards are listed here, a refresher of what the basic movement and operation steps are here, and that's under the player mat screen. There are a screen just for the politics page for our sunspot cycle and where we are in space politics. There's a screen for the legacy or for interstellar and for colonization here. We don't need to worry about those. Under notes, there are places to put notes for the entire game. I'm going to pull that up here and save that. If I also go into notes and I want to write myself and I save that here, those are notes that I can look at when it's my next turn to reminder, remember what I was doing so I don't have to refigure it out every turn. No one else can see your private notes, uh, public notes everyone can see, and scenario notes everyone can see also. Under victory points, it has the current player order and I double click that to reveal it again. So if NASA's first, we would just put them into first place. If you industrialize a S site, just move your industrialized markers here. If you claim glory, don't forget to grab your factory token and put it on the appropriate glory site. We're just going to bring that back over here and put it in the locations. As the board fills up with ships and rockets and everything else, eventually it may become tough to see where things are. For example, ESA has colonized that and then industrialized it and PRC has a rocket here and the UN has a claim on Mercury but you don't remember what all the things are. If you go up to our layers, layer info, we can hide all the layers. You can also use command plus and minus to hide and show respectively. Or say, you know what, just show me the factories. Ah, there's a factory on that M site. It's the basic gist of High Frontier on your turn. Go to the Board Game Geek, read what the previous player did, it says it's your turn, make sure auctions are all completed. Go to File, load the previous file when you're done with the advancing through the turn. Begin a log file of your turn when you're done with that. End the log file and you're good to go. And we should be good to go as soon as we pick factions and turn order. Have a great day. Thanks for listening in and I hope this is helpful. One last thanks to Phil Eklund for designing this game and to my friend Francisco for teaching it to me and helping me understand the rules. I've enjoyed being a module developer for this and if you're interested in playing, please check out the High Frontier page on BoardGameGeek or the High Frontier page in Yahoo Groups to learn more.